Now that we understood the basics of bandpass filter, let's see how to build a bandpass filter using a resistor, an inductor and a capacitor. The circuit design for such a bandpass filter is shown here. The center frequency of a bandpass filter, which is also termed as resonant peak, can be formulated by using the below equation, where L is the inductance of the inductor and C is the capacitance of the capacitor. The frequency response curve of the bandpass filter is shown here. The signal is attenuated at low frequencies, with the output increasing at a slope of 20 dB per decade until the frequency reaches the lower cutoff frequency. After the lower cutoff frequency, the output will increase with the increase of frequency with a rate of minus 20 dB per decade and attains maximum gain and this gain is constant until it reaches the higher cutoff frequency. After the higher cutoff frequency, the output decreases at a slope of minus 20 dB per decade. Previously, we have seen that the phase shift of a first order filter is 90 degree. We know that the bandpass filter is a second order filter, so the phase shift is twice of the first order filter that is 180 degree. The phase angle will vary with the increase of the frequency. At center frequency, the output and input signals are in phase with each other. Below the resonant frequency, the output signal leads the input signal and above resonant frequency, the output signal lags the input signal. The amplitude of the input signal is always greater than the output signal. The center frequency or resonant frequency at which the output gain is maximum can also be obtained by calculating the geometric mean of lower and upper cutoff frequency, where FR is the resonant frequency or center frequency, FH is the upper minus 3 decibel cutoff frequency, and FL is the lower minus 3 decibel cutoff frequency. Bandpass filters are widely used in wireless transmitters and receivers. The main function of such a filter in a transmitter is to limit the bandwidth of the output signal to the band allocated for the transmission. This prevents the transmitter from interfering with other stations. In a receiver, a bandpass filter allows signals within a selected range of frequencies to be heard or decoded while preventing signals at unwanted frequencies from getting through. In both transmitting and receiving applications, well-designed bandpass filters having the optimum bandwidth maximize the number of signal transmitters that can exist in a system while minimizing the interference or competition among signals. Now enough from theory and let's try to simulate an RLC bandpass filter in our simulator. Alright, here we are. Our bandpass filter is composed of a resistor of 250 ohms, an inductor of 500 milliampere, and a capacitor of 32 microfarads. We also have a function generator that will generate a sine wave starting from uh, 11 Hz and will go all the way up to 150 Hz. Before we start the simulation, we need to know that based on the value of the components, the center frequency or the resonant frequency of this bandpass filter is 45 Hz. This means that this filter will pass a range of frequency close to the resonant frequency of the LC pair. When it gets close to the resonant frequency, the impedance of the LC pair increases keeping the output closer to the input. Alright, let's start the simulation and see if this filter does the job and really allows only the signals to pass through with a frequency close to this resonant frequency of 45 Hz. 
Note that the input voltage is a constant 5V, so when the frequency gets closer to 45 Hz, the amplitude of the output signal has to be close to 5V. Alright, the simulation has started. And as you can see, the signal below 45 Hz is attenuated, but as the frequency gets closer to 45 Hz, the amplitude starts increasing. After the frequency passes 45 Hz, the signal starts to get attenuated again. So this means that our bandpass filter works just fine.